Okay, so let's move on to a second little cluster of behavioral biases. I hope you enjoyed the first group. Now in this, uh, this set, a few more examples. Uh, I'm also going to be adding a couple of videos to the web page uh, to give you some visual, vivid visual illustrations of the biases. One of which is overconfidence, otherwise known as the hot hand fallacy. This is the idea that oftentimes people can become supremely overconfident in their own ability, particularly for if they've had a recent success. You know, you're playing basketball and you hit a run of shots, hit a, a run of three-pointers, and suddenly you become very confident. Or you're the penalty shootout expert in your team, and you've hit uh, 10 successful penalties in a row. There is a danger of an overconfidence or the hot hand fallacy. It can also be applied, for example, to financial markets, where the, sh the shares or the stocks you've picked are doing well. And that can give you an insane sense of self-belief, which the evidence might not warrant. Social proof is quite interesting. Social proof is the idea that an individual looks to the behaviour of their peers to inform their decision making or to the behaviour and views of people that you already support. So you're looking for sort of social proof, perhaps a bit of confirmation bias as well. Uh, a good example here, I suppose, is an advert from The Guardian. The Guardian is free to look at on the Internet, uh, but uh, they're looking for Guardian readers, Guardian supporters to help support The Guardian's independence. Every contribution, however big or small, is so valuable for our future, and Guardian readers are invited to contribute. Good idea, but can you look at the design of the form again? Single, monthly, annual, people tend to gravitate towards the middle. £3, £7, £12, or other. Uh, okay, so you give them four choices, but look at, you know, it goes 3, 7, 12. If it had gone 2, 5, 10, the average contribution would have been less. Interestingly, they also use another little behavioural trick, uh, they convert £7 per month to £1.62 per week. Bringing down the perceived cost is a, is a form of mental accounting. Uh, people are more likely perhaps to contribute if they, if they see it in terms of per week rather than per month. Herd behaviour. We see a lot of herd behaviour in lots of aspects. Herd behaviour in particular... In financial markets, it's where individuals act collectively as part of a group. And often they take decisions as a group that they wouldn't necessarily take as an individual. Again, can you think of some examples of herd behaviour? Uh, we might see it, for example, in the choice of a group of people to go to a particular uh, concert or festival uh, or holiday, for example. People's decisions in financial markets. Uh, a new stock, a new company, a new share comes on the scene people start jumping onto that stock and others following behind. Uh, because if the stock goes up, you all share in the success. If the stock goes down, well, you all share in the failure. Herd behaviour is really quite important to understand. And again, we're just going to cover it briefly here, but uh, we'll provide you with a little extra video to explain that on the webpage. Choice overload, very important concept. Uh, in economics, we assume normally that choice is good, giving consumers a choice of product. Uh, it helps them make perhaps better informed decisions. But there's always the risk of choice overload, and that's when there are too many options, just too many options to make a fully informed, rational decision. You know, don't overload the consumer with too much choice. There's a very famous JAM study, and I'll link to that on the web page, which said that beyond a certain number, what it was, six or eight types of jam, consumers' utility and satisfaction went down because they, they literally had too much choice, too much thinking to do. And increasingly, of course, people follow a simple heuristic. They follow, they gravitate towards the middle option. In this case, uh, a rather nice type of, what, marmalade maybe? Uh, a really good example is the paint industry. Often you get a whole palette of paints. You're trying to find perhaps... The perfect shade, you can spend an hour, ages, weeks, months, years trying to find the, the right shade of paint. Again, how do you gravitate to the middle option there? But the, the key point is this. Choice is not necessarily good for the consumer. Too much choice can overload the senses. The ostrich effect uh, is uh, sometimes called the normalcy bias. And it's pretending things haven't changed when the hard evidence suggest that they have. And I think we've seen some examples of that in the recent coronavirus pandemic. And I will post a link on the website uh, to a rather interesting video, which I think illustrates quite nicely the ostrich, of ostrich effect. It's a group of students going to Florida beaches in the spring of 2020, uh, really fearful, not, not really of coronavirus, 
but fearful of losing their holiday uh, as the evidence mounted about the risks involved. So there we go, another little clutch of behavioural biases. So hopefully we've given you a little feel and flavour for the fact that there are some biases, psychological biases in our human brain, which can influence the decisions and the choices we take. In the next set of videos, we're going to look at the theory of behavioural nudges.